What's up guys? This is the Samsung AU8000. I just got this on Amazon Prime Day. This is the 65 inch. Initially it was 559 and I got it for 469, so I saved about 90 pounds. One of the reasons why I bought this one, which is the 2021 model from last year, instead of the newer 2022 model, which is the BU8000, is because some of the additional features they've included in the newer model, they don't mean much to me. I'll put a link in the description below where you can see the full specifications of this one and the new model. But essentially, I'll also write down a list of things that they've included as additional features for the new 2022 model, because for me, it didn't warrant me paying an additional 450 pounds just to upgrade to that one. Most of the features for majority of the users out there will be exactly the same. So I would recommend saving a lot of money and just going for the AU8000. In this video, I'm going to showcase to you guys a year later from when this was released, is this actually still worth buying today? So let's go ahead, I'm gonna unbox this, set it up on the TV stand right behind me, and let's go ahead and check out a whole bunch of categories which I'll have chaptered down below and see if this is actually still worth it. Okay, now just talking about the design, it is very slim as you can see, and it has edge to edge panels. If you look at the ports on the back, you have two USB ports, you have three HDMI 2.0 ports. HDMI 1 is just there at the bottom on the left. Just above that is HDMI 2, which is the eARC, which I will use for my soundbars. And then you have the third HDMI port right there at the back. You also have the LAN port, the optical port, and just on the right hand side of the TV is the power port. The legs themselves are 42 inches apart on this 65 inch model but the height of the legs can be adjusted slightly to raise the TV higher to accommodate a sound bar being laid down in front of it. It can also be easily wall mounted with any universal TV wall mount with the screws at the back of the TV. Now this TV comes with Tizen OS and you also get regular updates with it. This is the 6.0 version. I'm here in the settings. It is pretty responsive, but it's not so fluid. I would say personally for myself, it is pretty slow, but I'm just cycling through these apps here. You can reorder them, you can lock them in place. And I've got auto update just there on the top right set to on. If you go back and you scroll through the app store, you can see there's plenty of options. The main ones you'll have listed at the beginning. You can also cycle through and see other apps that you might want to add to your homepage. And there's also options to download apps if you wanted to include anything else that you don't see in the default list. I would say overall the Tizen OS was probably around 7 out of 10 for me because it is sometimes a bit laggy, especially when you turn the TV on for the first time after a night's sleep. It is very slow and as it gets loaded, then it starts picking up speed a little bit. But even then, it's not the fastest OS, but it has a decent amount of apps, which I think for the majority of users will be very happy with. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about the audio. This has built-in speakers that can output 20 watts of power, and they support Samsung's adaptive sound tech, which automatically adjusts audio based on what's happening on the screen. Also, this TV doesn't have Dolby Vision, and that's where a lot of the cost savings come from, because Samsung mentioned previously they wanted to have this as a budget-friendly TV, and part of the ways to do that was to cut out Dolby Vision support completely due to the additional manufacturing and licensing costs attached to that format. Now I'm going to play you a video of an example of some audio, but just remember how you guys hear it and how I hear it in person will be two slightly different things, but hopefully it will give you an idea of the quality on the audio of this.
Okay, so my opinion on the audio, I think it's not so great. I've put the volume up, as you can see, various different times, and I had to go up to above 60 to be able to get really good audio coming from this, so to immerse myself in whatever I'm watching. In some of my previous TVs, volume 20 would have been enough, but here on volume 20 for this exact same video that I've watched on my previous TV, it was so low that it just wasn't even worth watching at all until I really put the volume up. So for me personally, always get a soundbar with this TV because the quality on the audio, I don't think is actually worth it. And I guess that's where they also save a lot of cost savings. Okay, let's talk about the video quality now. Using Samsung's dynamic crystal color, you do get a very decent picture profile to the screen. The black levels, as you can see in this video, I would say are good, but in some cases, they might have a little bit of a dark gray tone to them, but I will say that's just the byproduct of it being an LED screen and not a QLED or an OLED. This TV, however, doesn't have any local dimming, so there isn't any way for the TV to make blacks appear deeper than they normally are. During SDR content, this TV's brightness levels top at around 250 to 300 nits. That's fine for most viewing experiences, but when it comes to HDR, a format that's designed to harness and optimize higher brightness levels, the AU8000 simply just can't deliver that. Especially if you watch during the day in a well-lit room, you might struggle to even see a lot of the darker scenes in your movies. Now I'm going to show you another demo, but what I'll also do at the same time is switch between the different picture modes and show you some of the viewing angles so you guys can see how it actually performs in terms of the video quality. Now you saw how reflective the screen is, especially if you do have a window in the room, but that's expected of LED screens like this. Overall, I'd give this a 7.5 out of 10 for quality. The 4K content with HDR is great. You do get clear details and a good contrast ratio. It's decent for watching daytime TV and on-demand apps for most scenarios. My main downsides with an LED TV like this is the lack of local dimming and higher brightness levels. And of course, compared to something like my OLED TV, which is the LG C10, this doesn't have as vibrant of a quality with sharper, clearer details as that. But for the TV of this price range, I think it does a very good job. Okay, so let's talk about gaming. If you're looking for next gen gaming capability, then this might not be the best TV of choice. Why? Well, if you want the absolute best TV for next gen gaming, then you would want specs like 4K 120Hz refresh rate, VRR or variable refresh rate, a dedicated HDMI 2.1 port for gaming, and Dolby Vision support. Dolby Vision support I think is an optional one and in some cases it isn't supported with the latest console so this isn't a big issue. This TV maxes out at 60Hz refresh rate, it has no VRR, but it does have ALLM, which stands for Auto Low Latency Mode, which helps with gaming. This only has HDMI 2.0 ports on the back and it doesn't have any Dolby Vision support. So that might affect some of the latest games that have the capability to max out at all of those next gen specs. That's not to say that gaming isn't great on this at all, because you still get a really good gameplay for the majority of users out there, and most games on the market are compatible up to 60 hertz anyway, so the higher or variable refresh rates will be a non-issue. I still got good performance out of it, 
hardly any lag. In some cases, it might be choppy, but that also could be down to the internet connection. But it also gives you a clear picture, which is sharp. It has vibrant colors and still gets to see a good, decent amount of ray tracing. So finally, to answer the question, is this 2021 AU8000 TV still worth buying a year later now in 2022? I would say yes for the price. You get a really nice picture, a very easy to use operating system. You got some nice features. It has good motion handling and it's decent enough to handle most of today's gaming. I would say if you wanted to really get the latest in technology to have all of the latest support for variable refresh rate, upscaling to 120 Hertz and also having Dolby Vision support, then you may want to get a different TV model. There's plenty of them out there. If you want the best screen, always look for a QLED or an OLED TV. But for this price point at £469, I would say this is a very good buy. The picture is clear and I will very much enjoy watching my Netflix TV shows and movies on this during the night times. Any questions you guys have, as always, drop a comment down below. I'll be available to help you out as much as I can. If this video helped you in making a decision of whether you would like to buy this TV or not, make sure to hit that like button. I've got new reviews out every week with really cool tech and gadgets, much like this TV, that come out every week. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of those ones. And I will catch you guys at the next one. Take care.